Hello, Jensen Vars here. In this video, we're going to talk about the Plot Unfolding Machine, a system to play solo role playing games by yourself. And since today I'm releasing the new version, revision number 8, and I know what you're thinking, but believe me, it's worth it. We're going to go through how it works, how it plays, and why is it a great new addition. Let's take a look together. For those of you catching up with this for the very first time, the Plot Unfolding Machine is a simple um, pen and paper system to play role-playing games by yourself. What that means? Well, as you have heard, role-playing games are usually driven by a game master who's like coordinating and setting up the scenarios and bringing up trouble so the characters can explore a fictional world. And Plot and Folding Machine is called a Game Master Emulator because some of those things typically a Game Master does are narrated here through the use of dice and randomness. It does not replace the figure at all. So you as the player will have to do both roles and you have to come up with the game, the idea for an adventure, the context, pull up certain ideas and inspiration from everywhere and then you get to play your characters in those situations. And then using dice, you put yourself in the player seat because you never know how things will end and where the game will lead you to. After that very short introduction, we can take a look at what is specific about Plot and Folding Machine and how it achieves this thing. So in the screen you see Tabletop Simulator because it's how I represent the board and, and where I play, but feel free to print this game or play it in any other tools. It's just a set of rules for you. If we take a quick look, the PDF will begin with instructions for how to use it and what makes it unique and an overview of the mechanics. And I will not, of course, explain in as much detail as the booklet says, but I'm going to explain some of the main concepts we go through in it. So to begin with, the most important thing or one of the most important features are the plot nodes. Plot nodes are elements that you want to pull into your game beforehand. It's kind of prep time, if you like and it's divided in four kinds. The first one is world and game elements. That is like for things that are on the big picture, like in which world you are. Are there, I don't know, um, electric storms? Are there like overnight power outages? Things that affect everybody in your game. Second is the meaningful encounters. That's represent um, ran uh, like random situations or events that you might expect to happen or looking forward to happen. Third is the things to be found. This is a third plot node which represents things that your characters might um, come up with or stumble upon. And fourth is the pending questions. So which kind of questions your characters have toward the plot that you're trying to unfold. And before we move from there, I wanted to make a mention because what this can prompt is, is like, hey, this is spoiling me ahead or telling me where is like the game going to go through. So there are two counter arguments to this. First is your characters are not born today. They have been living in the fictional world for many years, probably unless they are newborns. They have been in touch with ongoing problems, the, the current scenario, uh, typical issues they have with their governments or other struggles they have, right? So. These are the kind of things you pull into the plot notes. It's not necessarily something that did not yet happen, but rather something that could happen and that you're aware of, your characters are aware of. And the second counter argument is that by having them in the plot notes, by listing these kind of things in the plot notes, does not necessarily mean they will be called. And even if they are called, you don't know when. To give you an example of how plot notes work and are noted down, uh, I can show you the first or, or standard plot sheet, which has, as you see, a list of those plot nodes. You have to start with five plot nodes you can fill in. Ideally, you'd begin with one or two per node, but you can start with less or with more if you desire. And what you do is describe those nodes in little sentences here. And then when they are invoked and they will be invoked in the future through random prompts, you will roll a random dice to see which one is the one invoked and then you would have to make an interpretation of how you use that in your game. So essentially what happens is what you're doing is building your expectation toward the game, building 
an idea of what kind of thing you want to go through but you're not necessarily spoiling yourself because first you don't know how that will come up in play you don't know when and under which circumstances and at the same time you're preparing your brain to have certain creative juice because you could play without plot notes absolutely but you will have to make those things up on the go so it's better to take a look at that preparing or preparation stage where you bring in okay what's going on around the characters what is known to them what kind of risks they might face in the adventure next would be playing the game itself and this is where we go to actual playing so you have four ways of playing plot and folding machine let's say four states you find yourself in the first state is freeform role playing this is where you say hey i'm this character i'm saying this going there doing that and you also are the gm the game master or the storyteller saying okay this is where i found this is what i find so this is the freeform style where you just make everything you want play at your own style with freeform and just bring your move and move your story forward as you like the second state you can be in is where you want to ask a question and don't not answer it by yourself. Why is this important? Well, to play with uncertainty. You, like, in my opinion, if you make up everything and just forever play in state number one, which is freeform uh, playing, then there is no uncertainty. You're just a storyteller. Yes, you can do something like explorative um, storytelling where you just tell the story as you go but you are the owner of everything and every answer and everything that happens. So why not delegate some of that to some randomness to spice up your game? This is what Plot Unfolding Machine stands for in terms of, of philosophy behind solo role playing. And for that, you go to the Oracle Sheet. The Oracle Sheet has two kinds of oracles. One is the yes or no Oracle. So questions that can be answered in yes or no. These are the typical and the most frequent ones you should be using. Um, and they can be answered in three points of view. Deterministic, if you want a concrete answer to your questions, like, is it raining? Tell me yes or no. I want that to know that. Subjective answer could be when you're asking a question that's really subjective to the person who is asking it. For example, one of your characters is from a balcony and he's trying to spot from a distance whether there is the president is there. And you might get a subjective answer. Maybe there's someone who looks like the president um, maybe you need a skill role first to try your RPG system and things like this. So it's a much gray scale area of answers. And the third one is an interaction. When this question is made from one character to another, people are complicated. So answers should not be either yes or no. So you choose which ones to use depending on, on what is the question and where is it coming from. And then you answer it by rolling a d10. You choose the column and then compare the result and make an interpretation. The other kind of oracles are the open oracles and you, they can answer different things like who is someone, what, do, what does someone want, an activity like what is someone doing, a place, where are we talking about, a reason, why is something like that and explain a how. And finally you've got a focus or a what which is, gives a narrative meaning to this through random words. The point is that these oracles will answer very vaguely, openly and um, give you abstract answers so you need to adjust to your situation. This makes Plot and Folding Machine simple to use but also more work for you because it's not going to tell you specifically what's, what is the answer in your specific game, it's going to give you a direction and by combining the oracles on top with the focus you can get something interesting for example who okay someone who knows the area focus uh, plan and blackmail okay someone who knows the area is planning something or a blackmail and then given your your characters will be in a certain situation you will tie things together and come up with something that this oracle gave you that was the state number two that's something you do frequently in your games state number three is when you want to introduce a twist or something bad happened and something is not exactly as you hoped for and there is a list of triggers um, that suggest you when to use this it's called a modified proposal it's a way for plot and folding machine to tell you hey things are not like you author thought they are and give you 
a twist, a very general and vague twist, like for example, you have to add some stress or you need to include some good news. So it's an alteration to your proposal and that's why it's called a modified proposal. And the only matter there is to think when, when you use it. Uh, and to use it, you can wait for those situations where you either have certain degree of uncertainty. There is a list here of scene bit triggers. This is new in revision eight that tell you when it's a good idea to use a modified proposal. For example, when engaging in a conversation because people are unpredictable. Uh, when you ask whether something, whether everything goes as you planned and an oracle question says, no, it doesn't go as you planned, then you introduce a modified scene. It's a bit voluntary, uh, but you introduce these elements of surprise to your game and the idea is that they lead you to somewhere fun and unpredicted by you. The fourth state is the most random one. It's called the random prompt. Um, that is when you're not sure how your game proceeds. And this is great for the writer's block when you get stuck in your game. Possible triggers for random prompts are when you don't know what happens next after your characters do something, um, when your characters go out and explore a mysterious unknown location, when you just decide to let time happen and you expect something eventually to happen and kind of thing. So whenever you're like either blocked or you have strong degree of uncertainty in your game, call for a random prompt. They will tell you what's going on. And these are the ones who make use of your plot nodes. And that's when Plot Unfolding Machine becomes customized to your specific game setup. It can give you things like, okay, play one of the encounters. You find the thing you were looking for you find an answer to one of your questions and so on and so forth. I leave you that for you to explore, guys. Um, the idea of the random prompts is that they are triggering you to use them because they are also ways of advancing the plot. So let's talk about that next. So when it comes to plot, plot unfolding machine comes in the standard sheet with uh, this rectangle over here that has a very simple plot structure. The idea within this is that you either paint or cross it, the boxes out or, or move a bean from left to right as you advance in the plot. Why is that useful? It serves two purposes. The first is that to finally finish those games you never finish. If you say, I want to play this RPG, but I don't want to spend forever playing. I just want to finish some sort of plot and then move on to the next thing or another game. Then the plot track gives you this measure of, of finishing something. It also has sub stages which evoke you to make jumps in the chapters or the episodic approach of your plot. And uh, the other purpose it has is that it should impact in how you make interpretations and come up with things. If you say you're closer to the end and you get to trigger a game or world event and that's like, I don't know, cyber hackers at night, then you should make a reading that's more concluding. That's more like the final hack or or the final big uh, system shock that brings down the system. Like your interpretation should be altered by where you are in this track. But there are no rules for this. Read the word over here. If it prompts you something, that's the idea. Blood Unfolding Machine has many, as you can see here, um, sheets. So you can use different strokes uh, plot structures that match your kind of game that you want to have, hopefully prompting you even more uh, sources for how to read your game. So that's the plot track and the way you advance is to advance one box each time you either use methods or states C and D, which are using modified proposals or random prompts are the only ways that you can advance from left to right. Why? Because if you play freeform, then do whatever you want with the story. Maybe Plot Unfolding Machine is, is not ideal for you. Plot Unfolding Machine is ideal for you if you plan on using these randomizers, these plot unfolder mechanics, um, because these are the ones that make use of your plot nodes and carry on to a conclusion to your plot. So you can, of course, absolutely, if you read the rules, ignore certain random prompts that do not advance the track, or maybe you play and voluntarily decide to advance it because you made something that is significant to the game. Totally fine, this tool is for you. But the guideline is that you advance this whenever you introduce a certain level of randomness 
to your plot. That's how you lose control of your games and come back to the player seat. I hope that makes sense. Um, let's move on to the next point, which is the scene beats and what they are. Now that we have an idea of the plot structures and also we have an idea of the plot nodes, how do we make use of things? Well, you have the modified proposals, which we talked about. They are twists to your game, but the random prompt has a lot more. The random prompt include either a pointer to another situation that's completely out of your control, like a catalyst or a challenge or a complication or a situation which leave, lead your characters to face different circumstances. But also they will make use of your plot notes, as we said before. So you eventually find that thing you were looking for or you meet a new character. And these are called scene beats. Now, Plot and Folding Machine doesn't force you to have a structure of scenes. That's why it's called a beat. It's more like a step in your game. If you are moving super fast and you need two scene beats one after another to just, uh, you know, get more prompts, that's totally fine. Or as well, you can just roll with one random scene, a random prompt every now and then, play a lot in between and then come and the next random prompt later. So you decide that pace, but these beats are those points that give you an opportunity to advance in the plot track. I'm going to leave you uh, those to you for you to explore. They are pretty interesting. There are four out of the box um, situations that your characters can deal with and the, uh, the rest are up to your creation with using the plot nodes. The next thing is to take a look at your permissions that are like, let's say, accepted rules that you can add to your game. My suggestion is don't look into this until you have played once or twice. Uh, because they are a bit more advanced. So these permissions involve, for example, what happens when you roll twice the random prompt? Do you Can you get to roll again to get a different result? Or what happens when your games, your characters in the game achieve a good uh, milestone and they deserve to learn an answer? Can you voluntarily invoke a pending question to be able to answer it? These sort of things to manipulate the plot to fit your, your, your expectations of your game are in the permissions. And also what these permissions give you reference to is that you have two more ways of playing Plot Unfolding Machine. One is the prepless. This is also new in the revision number eight. The prepless uh, sheet allows you to play without plot nodes. So you can go on the fly and figure things out as you go. This is great for many players that want even less prep than normal. And as well, you have now a custom sheet, which you can customize. So in your game, you get things that are relevant to your particular experience. You can have like, I don't know, the king intervenes in our society, uh, a new president takes over. I don't know, you can place random prompts. You have six slots to fill in. And if you like to use plot notes with it, in the very end, there is a sheet with plot notes extended. Uh, that you have even bigger plot notes lists. So with that said, plenty to explore. I leave you a lot to that. You can watch my actual plays. I'm, they are not always fun, of course, and they are very long and not edited. But feel free to explore the plot unfolding machine because the revision number eight simplifies a lot what was done in the past. Um, prompts are more straightforward. The plot notes are also simpler. There is plenty of more advice now to when to use the scene prompts and, and so on. And the general explanation of how it plays also has been reviewed. With that said, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. Invite me a coffee or purchase the Plot and Folding Machine if you like. That will support me a lot and encourage me to continue, guys, giving you great content, hopefully, for playing solo RPGs on your own. This is Jensen Vars and until the next one. Bye-bye.